One of the most memorable things about The Lion King is, of course, the incredible costumes, which not only bring the lead characters to life, but also transform the whole cast into every kind of plant and animal that you might find on the African savanna. With so many intricate costumes to create and look after, the work that goes on is staggering. So let's visit the wardrobe department to find out a little bit more. The costumes, and when you look at what Julie designed, have a fundamental idea at play, which is to use natural materials or to appear like we're using natural materials to represent the earth and the planet and the savanna itself, but also to use patterns of fabric like the kinte cloth that Zazu's costume is made of that would be immediately African. Julie spent a lot of time researching all of the, 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 those sort of elements of tribal design and tribal clothing in, in Africa. There's a wonderful cohesive quality to all of the costumes. All of the costumes feel like they're from the same group. I take my inspiration as a costume and mask and puppet designer from everywhere. For instance, Mufasa's costume, when you look at the picture, this whole, this whole collar piece is really Balinese. This is very Maasai. The bottom is very Indonesian. As well as the costumes for the show's principal characters, the work that goes into the ensemble's costumes is just as extensive and we took a closer look at a few of them. This is a dancing lioness costume that used in the, the lioness hunt, and it's a um, fully beaded corset. Just turn around a little bit, patience, and we'll see if you can arm up. And we've taken attention to detail all the way around with all the beads changing colour, gently and gradually. There are no sparkles or sequins or anything like that in the show. It's all a matte finish, which gives it that sort of look as if it's in the African savanna, with this sort of sun-baked look. This is one of the grassland costumes used in, uh, in Act One. Um, there's about 24 of them on all together to create the feeling of the savannah when Mufasa and Simba are out hunting. There's a steel hoop to hold out the grass at the bottom. It's important that they look cohesive as a group. If they were all to sort of be sort of individual, then the, the effect would be lost. And then a lovely little grass corset made of artificial leaves from the skin color of the, the performer moving down to be lighter as it approaches the grass. And then going up to the grass at the top, the board is incidentally made of the same sort of stuff that they make airplane wings out of, so that it's supremely light. It's really, really light. You'd be amazed at how light this is. Costumes help the cast to portray over 25 different types of animals, as well as plants. And each costume is handcrafted and tailored for each actor. So after the work that goes into creating all of these costumes is complete, what effect do they have on stage as a whole? It's so rare to have costumes that transcend just being costumes that become scenery and become architectural elements on stage. If you can imagine any, any aspect of you or any, anyone's clothing being worn eight times a week for 52 weeks of the year, how quickly it would wear out, you know. So they, uh, they have to take care of everything really carefully, uh, carefully, really carefully hand wash most things, make sure that all everything's shiny and new as it should be on day one. So here we are then up in the wardrobe department, well above the stage where all of the repairs and alterations are going on for this evening's performance. Cynthia, hi. Hi, nice to see you, Matt. Very nice to see you too. Now, is it all right if I have a little look over everybody's shoulders Absolutely. while they're doing all Welcome. of their work? Um, can we have a look over there sure. first? Where the, uh... The beaded things are hanging on this rail. There's loads there, isn't there? Yes. We have uh, Simba costumes, Simba corsets that are all hand beaded. You're kidding me. No. Well, every single one is, is hand sewn on, is every it? Every single one is handmade. Goodness me. 99% of the, of the costumes, they start off as, as, as white fabric. Um, so everything is dyed or screen printed or painted or digitally printed. And that's an enormous job. As well as the volume of work involved, the attention to detail is also astounding. For example, every cast member's shoes are hand-painted to match their exact skin tone and adjusted and repainted if the cast comes back from vacation with a suntan. So, with all these costumes hanging up and waiting to be worn, it seemed only fair to try one on. Do you know what, Cynthia? I think Zazu's costume might just fit. What do you reckon? Let's give it a try. Yes? This is the hat as well? That's the hat. Super. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll get changed. And there you have it. What do you think? It fits perfectly. There is, of course, just uh, one vital thing missing for Zazu, and that is the tails on the coat, which Cynthia is just going to fasten on uh, because they're separate. But the, uh, the pants and the vest are all in one, and the shirt, well, that is actually just a collar, so it keeps it nice and cool. 
Very easy to, uh, to move in. There we are, look, get into that Zazu position. Put the hat on, and that is the whole outfit complete. We had a number of ideas at play when Julie was designing the costumes. We tried different things and did, did actually a laboratory, if you will, for a number of characters. We tried it with Zazu wearing a beak, Zazu being dressed more like a bird, and then Zazu with the puppet. And as we played with each of these techniques and looked at them, the ones that were the most exciting are the versions that you see in the show today.